USS Merrimack was launched by the Boston Navy Yard on June 15, 1855 and commissioned on February 20, 1856, with Captain Jarrett J. Pendergrast in command. She was the second ship of the Navy to be named for the Merrimack River. Shakedown cruises took the new screw frigate to the Caribbean and to Western Europe. USS Merrimack visited Southampton, England, Brest, France, Lipson, Portugal, and Toulon, France, before returning to Boston, Massachusetts, USA and was decommissioned on April 22, 1857 for repairs. Recommissioning USS Merrimack on September 1, 1857, Merrimack got underway from Boston Harbor on October 17 as the flagship for the Pacific Squadron. She rounded Cape Horn, Chile and cruised the Pacific coast of South and Central America until heading for home on November 14, 1859. Upon return to Norfolk, Virginia, USA, she was decommissioned again on February 16, 1860. On the afternoon of April 17, 1861, the day Virginia succeeded, Engineer-in-Chief B.F. Isherwood managed to get the frigate's engines lit off, but the previous night's successionists had sunk light boats in the channel between Craney Island and Sewell's Point, blocking USS Merrimack. On the 20th of April, before evacuating the Navy Yard, the U.S. Navy burned Merrimack to the waterline and sank her to preclude capture. When the Confederate government took possession of the fully provisioned yard, the base's new commander, Flag Officer French Forrest, contracted on May 18th to salvage the wreck of the frigate. This was completed by May 30th, and she was towed into the shipyard's only dry dock, where the burned structures were removed. Stephen Mallory, Secretary of the Confederate Navy, decided to convert USS Merrimack into an ironclad. As completed, CSS Virginia had a turning radius of about one mile and required 45 minutes to complete a full circle. CSS Virginia's commanding officer, Flag Officer Franklin Buchanan, arrived to take command only a few days before her first sortie. The Battle of Hampton Roads began on March 8, 1862 when CSS Virginia engaged the blocking Union fleet. Despite an all-out effort to complete her, the new ironclad still had workmen on board when she sailed into Hampton Roads with her flotilla of five CSN support ships, CSS Raleigh, CSS Beaufort, CSS Patrick Henry, CSS Jamestown, and CSS Teaser. The first Union ship to be engaged by CSS Virginia was the all-wood, sail-powered USS Cumberland, which was first crippled during a furious cannon exchange and then rammed in her forward starboard bow by CSS Virginia. As USS Cumberland began to sink, the port side half of Virginia's iron ram was broken off, causing a bow leak in the ironclad. Seeing what had happened to USS Cumberland, the captain of USS Congress ordered his frigate into shallow water, where she soon ran aground. USS Congress and CSS Virginia traded cannon fire for an hour, after which the badly damaged USS Congress finally surrendered. While the surviving crewmen of the USS Congress were being ferried off the ship, a Union battery on the North Shore opened fire on CSS Virginia. Outraged at such a breach of war protocol, in retaliation, Virginia's now angry captain, Commodore Franklin Buchanan, gave the order to open fire with hot shot on the surrendered USS Congress. USS Congress, now set ablaze by the retaliatory shelling, burned for many hours into the night. A symbol of Confederate naval power and a costly wake-up call for the all-wood Union blockading squadron. CSS Virginia did not emerge from the battle unscathed, however. Her hanging port side anchor was lost after ramming USS Cumberland. The bow was leaking from the loss of the ram's port side half. Two of her broadside cannons and both 12-pounder anti-boarding howitzers were put out of commission. Even so, the CSS Virginia attacked the USS Minnesota, which had ran aground on a sandbar trying to escape. It being late in the day, CSS Virginia retired from the conflict with the expectation of returning the next day and completing the destruction of the remaining Union blockaders. Later that night, USS Monitor arrived at Union-held Fort Monroe. She had been rushed to Hampton Roads, still not quite complete, all the way from Brooklyn Naval Yard, in hopes of defending the force of wooden ships and preventing the rebel monster from further threatening the Union's blockading fleet and nearby cities like Washington, D.C. She arrived at Hampton Roads by the bright firelight from the still-burning triumph of CSS Virginia's first day of handiwork. The next day on March 9, 1862, the world's first battle between ironclads took place. The smaller, nimbler, and faster USS Monitor was able to outmaneuver the larger, slower CSS Virginia but neither ship proved able to do any severe damage to the other, despite numerous shell hits.
by both combatants, many fired at virtually point-blank range. After hours of shell exchange, USS Monitor finally retreated into shallower water after a direct shell hit to her armored pilot house forced her away from the conflict to assess the damage. The captain of the Monitor, Lieutenant John L. Warden, had taken a direct gunpowder explosion to his face and eyes, blinding him, while looking through the pilot house's viewing slits. USS Monitor remained in the shallows, but as it was late in the day, CSS Virginia steamed for her home port, the battle ending without a clear victor. CSS Virginia retired to the Gosport Naval Yard in Portsmouth, Virginia, and remained in dry dock for repairs until April 4, 1862. In the following month, the crew of the CSS Virginia were unsuccessful in their attempts to break the Union blockade. The blockade had been bolstered by the hastily ram-fitted paddle steamer SS Vanderbilt and SS Illinois, as well as the SS Arago and USS Minnesota, which had been repaired. CSS Virginia had made several sorties back over the Hampton Roads, hoping to draw USS Monitor into battle. Monitor, however, was under strict orders not to re-engage. The two combatants would never again meet in battle. On April 11th, the Confederate Navy sent Lieutenant Joseph Nicholson Barney in command of the paddle side wheeler CSS Jamestown, along with Virginia and five other ships in full view of the Union squadron, enticing them to a fight. When it became clear that Union Navy ships were unwilling to fight, the CS Navy squadron moved in and captured three merchant ships. By late April, the new Union ironclads, USRC EA Stevens and USS Galena, had also joined the blockade. On May 8, 1862, CSS Virginia and the James River Squadron ventured out when the Union ships began shelling the Confederate fortifications near Norfolk, Virginia. On May 10, 1862, advancing Union troops occupied Norfolk, Virginia. Without a home port and no place to go, CSS Virginia's new captain, Flag Officer Tattnell, reluctantly ordered her destruction in order to keep the ironclad from being captured. Early on the morning of May 11th, 1862, off Craney Island, fire and powder trails reached the ironclad's magazine, and she was destroyed by a great explosion. What remained of the ship settled to the bottom of the harbor. However, CSS Virginia's 13 Stars and Bars battle ensign was saved from destruction and today resides in the collection of the Chicago History Museum, minus three of its original stars. Only a few remnants of CSS Virginia have been recovered for preservation in museums. Reports from the era indicate that her wreck was heavily salvaged following the war. If you liked this video, then you should click the like button. If you're not subscribed, please do so. You should follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links in the description. If you would like to financially support the channel, then sign up to my Patreon page. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you farewell.